Hey, yo, what's up, guys? Zaid here with another episode of Sage Experience. Today, we're going to be talking about where the heck have I been? I will be covering three things that I've been doing and that have been keeping me off of YouTube, actually, for quite some time, but it's some landmarks that I've been trying to achieve. The first one being running marathons. I finally got to doing that, and I'll talk about it right now. Second, getting better at my Olympic lifting and starting to get some size after my gynecomastic surgery. That has been something that I've been really working hard on. And third, getting better at Muay Thai. Just starting to get better at Muay Thai, starting to get much, much better. And along with that, which would be, I guess, a fourth one, is what has my meal regimen been ever since I started doing these things because it's changed a lot. My carnivore ways of eating have had to shift here and there just a bit, you know, to just kind of move everything and to be able to sustain the amount of volume that I'm doing because it's a lot. So let's start off with the first thing. The first thing is running. I started running a lot, guys, this year. A lot. 0.6 mile repeats for five times. I was aiming to do seven miles every day. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to every single day due to work, doing Muay Thai on the side, Olympic lifting, and plus the running, getting home, uh, you know, like chores, all that extra good stuff that everybody has in their lives. I started to run every day for at least four miles three to four miles and I've been posting consistently on Instagram. So if you guys want to go ahead and check out where I've been posting all that stuff, you can definitely check out my Instagram. I'll leave it right below. And on my Instagram, I was putting up every day, every day, what, how much I was running, depending on how I was feeling, all these little things. So I started to find out that I really wanted to do a marathon for the longest time. I've been wanting to do a marathon, but maybe for this year, finally, I said, you know what, let's start doing marathons consistently. And so I finally took out to the streets and started doing marathons, whether it was just on the weekends, me on my own, or whether it was just um, doing halfies, you know, 13.1 um, uh, miles run, which is a marathon is a total of 26.2, but I have only done that once. I've only done one full marathon and I have done more half marathons than marathons because I've only done one but I've done several half marathons by now and I've competed in several places and I really really liked it I competed here in the rock and roll marathon just about a week ago here in San Diego it was pretty awesome there was different little venues as we were running um, every two miles or so of people kind of rocking out you know there was a bunch of little places and as we ran we also found some really cool stuff like people setting up kind of shop outside their homes and just giving us drinks as we were going by some of them were water some of them were replenishing you know like lemonade and stuff but other people were giving out uh irish coffee and whiskey there was this guy that had the full attire he had um just a, a full like irish like traditional irish uh attire i kind of don't know what the, the name right now and i don't want to get uh destroyed uh by not saying it properly so but you guys know what i mean and he had the full attire and he was giving out irish coffee and irish whiskey so it was pretty fun to to run that marathon uh a lot of things like that you know and then I also did the San Diego Marathon. That was my first marathon, and I really like the medal for that one. It's it's pretty cool. Hey, yo, what's up, guys? It's race day over here in San Diego, and today's gonna be my first half marathon, or official half marathon. So, let's go. And then the other one I did was in Surf City, so closer to that Long Beach area, closer to LA. It was really, really cool marathon as well but unfortunately on that one because of the drive up there and then that same morning I ran the marathon it really uh, hindered my ability to run to the pace that I wanted to run I still finished the half marathon under two hours which is not a terrible mark but for me it was uh, <laughs> I, I, I was I was aiming for 145 you know at least but yeah first was the San Diego marathon then was the surf city marathon and as of recently that I just completed last week was the rock and roll marathon so we, I completed all those, all those were half marathons. I'm kind of done right now with my half marathon running. However, I think that the biggest thing I've learned is how important cardio is for me. And this is for step two, which is the second thing I wanted to talk about, my Olympic lifting. I like Olympic lifting, I like lifting. I also like lift, lifting weights, you know, bodybuilder-esque style and Olympic lifting. However, I had to change the way I was approaching this because I was running uh, so much. 
So I had to be very conscious of where I was putting the amount of weight that I was putting. And so I also had to work a lot on my running technique to make sure I wasn't just adding on weight and then using terrible, terrible form to run and, you know, just using your muscle stamina to get you by, which is something that you can definitely do. And then at the end of the race, your, your calves are super destroyed, your legs are super destroyed because of improper running technique. So I didn't want that for me. And I ended up improving my technique by improving in my weightlifting as well. So it was more of a being super conscious of where my running was and then also being very, very conscious of what I was doing with my lifting. Ooh, seven minute miles, guys. 187 pace. 187 um, steps per minute. That's what I have to do in order to get that. And with my lifting, what I started to do, I started to do Olympic lifting like two to three times a week. So, which is still a lot in comparison to what most people put in, but I find that I end up getting a lot of stamina from those lifts, especially just clean and jerk. That's the one I, I stick to the most because it gives me a lot of explosive power that I think actually a lot of runners don't put in on, on their daily routines or on their weekly routines, you know? And I think it's a strength component that really helps you out all, overall on really long runs, especially for endurance and again like I said that explosive power with the full extension on the back leg so those were working synergistically pretty well however I was also doing Muay Thai on the side which brings me to my third thing and that's where things started to get a little dicey I was putting in two major cardio sessions a day with my run which it could have been either from uh, three to five miles sometimes even six miles a day 0.6 mile repeats five times uh, quick little run it was awesome um i think it was total um 34 minutes for four miles that's not bad wasn't great but considering there was a lot of hills here at sdsu and every now and then on sundays you know i would get in a, a 12 miler 13.1 mile like do the half marathon you know getting ready two weeks prior to the half marathon to see what pace i could keep you know race pace you could say and then my Muay Thai. For those of you who have d haven't done martial arts, Muay Thai is actually the art of eight, or it's called the art of eight. And the reason is because you use your knees, your elbows, your fist, and your shins, basically for kicking, you know? So basically you use everything, guys. It's, it's, it's very, very demanding, you know? It's basically like, if you just want kicking and punching, go to Taekwondo. If you want knees and elbows, go to Muay Thai, you know? It's just an extra layer of stuff that you add. I was starting to realize that that was a lot of volume. That was a lot of volume plus work, you know, and all the extra stuff that I have to do throughout the day. And it wasn't that the volume was too much. It was just my nutrition had to shift. And that's where I started to realize that I had to make the most adjustment. My body was able to easily handle the workload because I've done so much throughout the years, you know, I train like an athlete, even though I just kind of do my, my regular thing on a daily basis, you know, this is just the way I've chosen to live my life, you know, just consistent exercise. It keeps me sane up here and it keeps my body working, uh, especially after all my injuries. I know that if I just sit and don't do anything, it, they definitely come back and I, I can start feeling my shoulders. I don't know if you heard a pop right now. That was my shoulder moving. It was like, let's just face it, I'm broken at this point. So I like to keep this volume and this volume actually keeps me injury free, if that makes any sense. By doing more, I actually get a bigger benefit than if I wasn't doing anything or a smaller amount. Which brings me to the fourth thing, my diet. All of these things were majorly affected by my diet, which is one of the main reasons why I wanted to make this video. I've had to change my diet a lot. As you guys know, I've done this channel, I've kind of built this channel on the carnivore diet, but along the way, I've made certain changes. I made, I've gone through several different iterations about this carnivore diet. First, it was all beef, you know, tried it out. Then the second time around, I started adding a couple of things such as Greek yogurt, a little bit of honey every now and then, and that seemed to be a pretty good combination as well. And then the third time around, I started to add fermented foods such as kimchi that I started making, sauerkraut that I started making, pickles, and a couple of others such as kefir or kefir. I always mess that up. <laughs> kefir. So with the amount of glycogen that I was wasting on the daily basis or that I was using up on the daily basis, the explosive power that I required, the just sheer amount of electrolytes that I was going through, salt, everything, you know, 
was just too much and was too demanding to just keep it straight carnivore. So I started to change my diet a little bit because I didn't want to gain any weight. Even though I did want to gain some muscle, I didn't want to gain a whole lot of muscle because on my runs, it was just going to be, it, it, you can tell a difference when you're running a half marathon, when you're running maybe two or three miles a day, it doesn't feel as bad. But when you're running half a marathon, you can feel how much four to five extra pounds in your body like does in like just even water weight. By the end of the marathon, even though you're tired or half marathon, even though you're more tired, you can definitely feel lighter just because just if you didn't replenish the water throughout the entire thing. Uh, I usually tend to weigh 10 pounds less every time I finish a half marathon. And that's been going significantly down to now, like I believe like seven pounds because my body has gotten so used to going through these half marathons um, with no water. I try to do it with no water. I've done both ways and sometimes it ends up distracting this. It's two miles in, point two miles repeat or 10 sets so that's a total of two miles who says two miles can't suck so i had to change my carnivore diet so what did i end up doing i ended up doing a couple of things first i ended up going from 100 percent meat or let's say i kept it like at about 93% meat, 95% meat, and then all the other extra stuff was my ferments that I do, adding on a couple of berries and some honey every now and then. That was about the biggest thing that were the 93% to maybe the 7% ratio of other things were. Now I had to switch it down to a little bit more of a 80 to 20%, 80 being mainly meat. It's super meat heavy still very meat heavy. I find that if I don't eat the meat, actually, I really do feel weak in a different way. My concentration is down, my my wanting to actually go and run, which is a big thing. I think a lot of people don't realize that sometimes you can go ahead and go through the motions every day, but that doesn't mean that you want to do them. When I don't eat meat consistently, I can start definitely checking that out over two to three days. Like, hey, I I feel a little lethargic. I don't want to do things. I'm just pushing myself to do it, which is something quite common for most people. But for me, I usually want to go get after it. You know, like I want to go run that marathon. I want to go run that half. I want to go, you know, hit it at Muay Thai. I want to go hit that bag. I, it's, it's a big thing for me. I want to go lift heavy weights. But then when you start realizing what you're eating and what you're getting from the meat, such as your B vitamins, you know, creatine, you're getting a lot of creatine. That's really good for your brain. Eggs, if, I, if I'm, if i you know, like there's choline in there as well, like in eggs, like that's a major part as well. If I don't eat red meat and I don't eat eggs, like that choline that's in the eggs, I can really, really tell, you know? And for me, it's always been a thing also about eating pork. It's really important. I found that pork, red meat, eggs are the biggest thing for me. Poultry, eh, I'm not a big poultry eater. Very rarely uh, do I eat poultry. So yeah, those are the biggest things. And as far as fish goes, I don't mind fish. What I do, uh, what I did start including as of very recently was oysters. Cause I know I started to find a place where I could get oysters for very cheap and really good oysters. So I started incorporating oysters once a week and I started incorporating also beef liver once a week. My girlfriend has been getting used to it a little bit more. I grew up with it, so I don't mind it. But that is, those are the biggest things. Um, my red meat consumption has gone up quite a bit and it's helped me out a lot. It's kept me pretty muscular, even with the whole running situation, you know? My choline intake or eggs have gone up. Liver once a week, oysters once a week. That way I can get a good source of iron and a couple of other things that are found in those shellfish. There's a lot of stuff that just helps out guys. And even the sodium, but I'll get to that right now. Pork, definitely, and very rarely do I eat poultry, you know? The 80%, that's that. So once again, that 20 extra percent is gonna include dairy, some dairy, and there's a very specific yogurt. Actually, it's not even Greek yogurt anymore. It's the one that I found that it's actually pretty awesome is the one that they sell at Trader Joe's. There's one with a green top, and that one's pretty awesome. It's actually it comes from grass-fed cows. I'm not sure if it's grass-fed, grass-finished cows, but you can tell the difference once you open it up, it's yellow. It's like very, very much yellow, and it tastes so much better. It tastes rich, it has a taste to it, and it doesn't feel hard to digest, so that's one of the things that I kept in there. Berries I had to keep in. Blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, any kind of berry. Berries are awesome, blackberries but mostly I usually go to Costco, buy the four pound bag, the ones that are frozen, 
those are perfect i'll go ahead and buy that honey i still use very rarely very sparingly every now and then whenever i just need to jolt throughout the day i'll just go I'll like I'll, I'll squeeze a, a swig of that and and that does the trick i also use it to take away very sweet tooth sometimes i go on a sweet rant and that could be dangerous so i definitely use that and that kind of like saturates the the sweet part of my taste buds i guess you could say and i end up not wanting any more sweet so that's a perfect way to kill that my fermented foods the biggest component out of all this that 20 percent is now going to be fruits i started adding more fruits and i'm talking about eating like four four fruits a day um which i know is is quite a bit of sugar when you start thinking about it it's fructose however the difference i found that it made in the way I felt after eating it doesn't even feel remotely the same as eating some carbs with it you know like maybe eating a piece of steak with uh, some potatoes it doesn't feel the same at all I feel a whole lot better just eating the fruit by itself and it doesn't feel heavy at all but yeah I've incorporated fruits more than anything I've tried to kept away from grains rice every now and then but I think rice is like would be like the only thing that I usually keep in the diet that that is the consistent actual grain of carb other than that and i i stepped away from a lot of things and there's nothing bad you know there's there's a time and place for all these grains but these things have helped out immensely and again it's all been for the goal of just improving my physical fitness getting better on my type my olympic lifting has gotten better my my deadlift i i can pick up so much more weight now i'm losing weight Believe it or not, during all this madness, my body is found, it's, it's stabilized at a good point. So I've lost a couple of pounds here and there. Maybe you can't see it on the scale, but you can definitely see it in the mirror, which I think is the most important one. My, I, there's more definition to a lot of my, um, like my trap section, my shoulder section, my mid section. It's, it's all changing. So there's progress being made uh, on that front. And then finally on, on the running, the running has gotten better. I've been working on my technique. Every time I do a half marathon, I get less and less strained. I can feel that my calves weren't working on this marathon as hard. I don't, I never, I'm never super winded. It's just, I think because of the Muay Thai and everything, all the stuff that I do, but my muscles are so much more resilient. I feel less tired. Things have been working. I have been really liking this progress, but I've been super, super busy guys. I just wanted to keep you guys updated what I've been doing, how my carnivore diet has changed, all the volume that I've been doing. And to definitely, if you guys want to definitely hear a lot more about this, what I'm doing on a daily basis, check out my Instagram. I've been posting on my Instagram more than anything because it makes it so easy after a run. Boom, go ahead and put that up. And once again, thanks for joining me on another episode. Go ahead, comment, like, and subscribe. You guys know the whole thing push that notification bell if you guys haven't already done so. Let me know what you guys want to see. Let me know if you guys want me to touch on anything running related, anything Olympic lifting related, Muay Thai. Right now, I'm kind of becoming jack of all trades, master of none, but I don't think I'm doing terrible. And also, leave some comments down there. I would really like to hear if you guys are doing anything similar. So any questions or any tips that you guys might want to leave down there, please let me know. But in any case, guys, Zay, out. Peace.